เวลาเวลาเวลาเวลาฮัลโหล Hello good evening First of all family I must apologize because I am totally in the inappropriate time zone Okay I'm all here in my whole you know little crazy world and I hear my chimes go off ding 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 8:30 Central Time which is 9:30 Eastern Time Oh shoot I was supposed to be on the live stream 30 minutes ago <laughs> <laughs> and I have my my uh, chime set for 8:30 p.m. Central time. Okay, down here in Mexico. So I'm, I'm back now. I'm back now. I'm good. I'm ready. Are we ready? We ready, ready. ready. Yes. <laughs> We're ready. So first of all, hey, Uja, what, Jan? How you loving? How you loving? How you loving? So if this is your first time to the channel, I am Reverend Valerie Love, also known as Kaisi, and we are here tonight because we have a global community of creators. We love creating. We're content creators. We're book creators. We're YouTube creators. All of that video content creators, and most importantly, spiritual people. A lot of us are um, spiritual people, loving, loving, loving to share a powerful message. So tonight, as you know, we are talking about your books. Here is a phenomenon that I have encountered on too many occasions. Too many occasions. Here is a phenomenon I have encountered. We're at a retreat. Here comes this incredible being. We're talking about books. Oh, I have a book. You do? Yes. What's it about? Where is it? Oh, I wrote a book a few years ago. I published it. How's it doing? How's it selling? Is it getting out there? Uh, no, my family bought it, and that's about it. I think I sold maybe 20 copies. Hmm. That is going to end tonight. That's going to end tonight. Yes. And, yeah, that's going to end tonight. And the reason that that has to end is because we are creating too much deliciousness. Thank you, StreamYard. We are creating too much deliciousness for it not to be going into the hands of the people that need to read these books. So we got other authors with us tonight. And I'm going to introduce first Harmony, the incredible, incredible, incredible creator of Your Book in 30 Minutes, that beautiful crash course to help people get introduced to low content, no content publishing. And you want to tell us about your books? You're an author in four anthologies and you have hundreds of low content, no content books. Yes. Yes. It's been such an exciting, enjoyable ride thus far. Every time I create a new book, I feel like it's my favorite. Every time I hit that publish button, I am just more and more over the top excited about my creation. I feel like they keep getting better and better. And I think with anything, we improve upon our craft. And it's just been so much fun. And I love what I have been doing throughout this, I guess, year and a half that I have been on this journey. I do low content books, which means that the person who purchases my books, they are really the writers. I have been a part of a few anthologies, which means that it's myself along with other authors. We put our stories together in one book. Um, I like to write, but I don't like to write a whole lot. Like Reverend Love, she just writes books like crazy. That's not my strong point. So I love to create things where other people can really be the person with the pen and write in the book. So I love what I do and I love sharing that with others on both ends. I like to create them and I like to show others how they can create them as well. So that is my specialty and that is the my love language right now. It's something that I'm really truly enjoying. I love it, I love it, I love it. And let me say hi to the love too, for you say be right nature, how you loving? How I, hi, Audi Rose by Autumn. Hey Arlene, go ahead, how you loving? How you loving, how you loving, how you loving? Now let's go to, <clears throat> Pardon me, Zaire, also known as Tania Butler, the author of, don't you love how that sounds? Don't you love how that sounds? <laughs> yes. Best-selling author. 
best selling number one best selling author number uh, one best selling author yeah. number one. <laughs> Hi, hi, Kaisi. Hi, Harmony. Hi, I love tubers. Hi, everyone. <laughs> yes, I am Tania Butler, also known as Zaire, and I am officially an author now. My very first book. <laughs> Congratulations! Thank you. Congratulations, you beautiful. Out there. This is a spirituality channel, and we're all about the word up in here. And expressing your highest divine potential. How does it feel to be an author? Hey, power the occult. How you loving? I feel accomplished. That's how that's how it feels. And it feels very good for myself. I needed that. And what's the title of your book? Ten Things I Learned from Being a Lesbian Domestic Abuser. Which brings us to secret number one. We want to go into that title. Harmony, do we want to go into that title? Because we're giving three solid reasons why your book is not self. Yes. Especially for light workers, coaches, speakers, authors. These are all the people that we work with all over the world. Why your book isn't selling, the title sucks. Yes. So if you have a title that does not really ring that does not speak <laughs> to others, it's not going to sell. And I remember when we were in a brainstorming session with Tania, I forget what you were calling that book at first. And I was like, what, what was the name of the book? Before? What was the original title? <laughs> what was the name? Please remind me. I don't even remember what, what the, the name original was name? because the, we, that wasn't the name. But what mm -mm. was the name? <laughs> I might have to look in my journal. <laughs> Whatever it was, it was a no for me. <laughs> it was a no. It was a no. And how did the title, how does this title make you feel? Does it make you squirm? Does it make you nervous? And both. Ding, both. ding, 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 ding. And, and why does it make you squirm? Why, do, why does it make you nervous? Because it's a, a deep experience and it's a topic that I would never would want to talk about because it's, it's so, it's heavy. And you found the courage to write this book. Yes, I did. <laughs> and you kind of went through it while you were writing this book, didn't you? I did. I definitely had a lot of, it was definitely an emotional roller coaster. A lot of emotions was coming up. Mm -hmm. 10 things I learned from being a lesbian domestic abuser. So could you tell us, <laughs> my radiant face said powerful title, isn't it though? Now, could you tell us a couple of the 10 things? Cause I just love these 10 lessons. I just love them. Could you tell us a couple of them? Yes, I absolutely will. Just to, just to uh, whet the appetite of, of uh, the love tubers. Yes, so stop believing your own lies. Sheesh. Yes. Another one? Another one is there's never a good day to have a black eye. <laughs> I think that one's my favorite. <laughs> there's never a good day to have a black eye. It's not. It's really, it's not. No, there's no day to not be cute. No, 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 no. Black eyes are not cute. Is there another <laughs> no one that you want to drop on us? Yes, I would share abuse travels through the bloodlines oh wow wow so what did you discover about your own yourself in your bloodline as you were writing this book well i found out that my father he was consistently abusing my mother which i've, I've never physically witnessed maybe if i was maybe too young to maybe remember but i that's what I've, I've learned. And I never knew that my dad was like a wife beater. I knew he was, you know, strict and militant and all that, but he, he never put his hands on me. He never whooped me ever. So I never was experiencing that with him. I just knew he was just, you know, kind of mean. I'm just like, uh-uh. But it wasn't until writing this book that I talked to one of my family members, his aunt, who was with him growing up. And when my mom was here, 
And that's when I just called her when I was writing the story because I, I was just like, I wonder if it's something inside of me because it always felt like this was not really a part of me. Like it always felt, it just didn't feel like it belonged to me. And so I, I asked her and she told me that, yes, my mom had told her numerous times that my dad put his hands on her. So that's what I found and that his father was abusive to his mom, my grandmother. And my granddad's dad was also abusive to my great grandmother. Wow. So I know that's three generations, not knowing if it's maybe more, but there's three direct generations that kind of landed on me. Wow. Yeah. Did you feel that you healed that, that you got to the core of that by writing this book, by writing your, and putting it out there and coming out with the courageous, you know, act of being vulnerable and transparent? Well, I don't know if I completely healed it, but I know that it definitely ignited the healing. So it's definitely in the process. If it's not already healed, because it could be, but if not, it definitely started the process. So when you had the title, as you were in the Wealthy Author Coaching Mastermind, Wealthy Author Mastermind. And so as we were going through these titles with the books, with the authors and some of the other authors in the program, like Rosalind, she has this incredible book called The Sacred Candle. She could not be with us tonight. She's going to be with us on another show. And then, of course, we have Icy, Icy the Medium. And Icy wrote an incredible book on how to be a medium, especially coming out of the Christian church. And then you wrote this incredible book on 10 Things I Learned from Being a Lesbian Domestic Abuser. So what can you say about titles? Because this is one of the number one reasons why books don't sell. The title does not do this. Reach and grab the person and pull them in and reel them in and make them think, what is that about? Or even creating intrigue, curiosity, what is that? Whipping attention. You got to whip attention with that book, the title. So what did you discover about that? And, and, and how did you have the courage to put this kind of title on the book? Well, first and foremost, get a coach. Because you definitely <laughs> helped me through that process. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yes, you definitely helped me through that a lot, mm. getting that title. I knew what I wanted to do, but being in this master, this master class, this mastermind with you in this Arthur mastermind class, it took everything that was inside of me and you helped mold this perfect title. Oh my God. I love the title. I love it. 10 things, 10 things I learned from being a lesbian domestic abuser. And I tell you one thing, that title could play on a TV show. It could play on the media. It could play as a movie. You, you have limitless possibilities now that you actually have the courage to tell your story and heal three, four, maybe even five, six generations of domestic abuse. Like that's freaking badass. Yes, it's. Thank you. Oh, yeah, it's badass. I mean, my book, How to Be a Christian Witch, like, that's why that book has sold thousands upon thousands upon thousands of dollars in book royalties to me, and, and way more than that in uh, actual revenue, because that's a book that when people pick up the title, How to Be a Christian Witch, they either mm -hmm. hate it or love it, <laughs> which is one of the beautiful aspects of a really powerful title of the book, most people always thinking about attraction, 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 attraction. They want to draw everyone. What we don't realize with our title is you want to actually repel the people that are not for you. That's in all your marketing. Repel the people that are not for you. You don't want everyone. You want who you want, right? You want who you want. So that title is going to be critical when it comes to attracting your avatar the perfect person that is going to pick up your book and read your book. We talk about this in the course. We have two courses out now. I just want to drop this little nugget in here. We have two courses out now, the baby course, which is your book in 30 minutes. It's a crash course by Harmony Taya Bell, an incredible, incredible, incredible course. And all five stars by reviews by the students in the course, they love it. And they, once again, they have taken so much action and written so many books. No content, low content. I think we gotta have a running tally of how many books you have helped those authors create. Mm -hmm. And then now we have the big course, 
on how you're going to create a whole business. Kindle Cash Book Empire, which, oh my God, did we pour everything into that course. And that course yes. is on special up until June 30th. And um, what's really delicious about that course is it now has a payment plan. So it's really, it's a really nice investment in your Kindle Cash business. So titles, before we go into the next reason why your book is not selling, because we're covering the top three, what else do you want to say about titles and grabbing people? How many grabbing people? Well, with titles, you want to make sure that, like with Tania's book, it makes everyone in the room a little bit uncomfortable. And I think when we're thinking about a title, you want that uncomfortability for that particular book. So that was the perfect, I believe that that title and um, the, the second thing we're gonna talk about is covers. I believe that title was one of the main reasons she was able to get to number one bestseller like within a few short hours of her book releasing because it evoked emotion. And that's one of the main things you wanna be able to do with your title is evoke that emotion, whether good or bad. Because we all have been in some sort of relationship in our lives that was some abusive in some sort of way, even if it wasn't physically abusive, it could have been emotionally abusive. So we all have been either the one that was abusive or the one that was probably on the other end of that. So it evoked some sort of emotion for everyone that heard that title. And I give you mad props to Nia for being able to label yourself as the abuser. That took guts to be able to do that. There's and just gangsta. a spiritual gangster all the way. So definitely having the ability to label the book as it is. I see so many authors that want to write a book and make that book be about them, but that book, even if it, even if the book is about you, it's not for you. Woo! So that again even if the book is about you it is not for you so when you're giving the book the title and when you're creating the cover and when you're thinking about all of the pages in between the book is it's, it may be about you but it's not for you so who are you selling this book to and i think people miss the point so when we're thinking about titles it's great to make the titles um, for if it's not like a how to do A, B, C, D or or whatever it is that you're explaining. So the how to titles are always awesome. But if it's not a, a how to type of title, it's always great to keep the titles short and sweet. If we think about some of our favorite books, a lot of the titles are going to be short and sweet, generally about three or four words. Like I was just thinking about some of my favorite books that people always remember. The four hour work week. How many of ah! us have read that book? <laughs> the Four Hour Work Week. I, I love that book. <laughs> oh my God, that's a great title. Yes, the Four Hour Work Week. So a lot of the books that have like those three or four um, word titles, they then, if you think about it, they have those subtitles that have like the benefit, the benefit that the book solves for the person that's reading it. So that's what a lot of the that's the, the formula that a lot of authors use when they are putting together their title. The title is short and sweet. It's attention grabbing. But then they list out. So if you're brainstorming this, you'll list out maybe seven to ten benefits of your book, the problems that your book solves. And then you will pick like your favorite or the most beneficial benefit and use that benefit as your subtitle. So the. Subtitle of the four hour work week is escape the nine to five, live anywhere and join the new rich. So ah, and that's, that's his subtitle, cutting edge. Cutting, cutting edge. edge. Yeah. So that's one of my favorites. And of course the four agreements, three, ah. three words, the five love languages, four ah. words. So those, ah. like, if you think about it, amazing titles. So most titles are short and sweet. And then again, they're going to have their, the benefit as their subtitle. So just think about that. Think about the books that you love. And most of them go with that particular formula. Short and sweet title. And then they have a benefit as the subtitle. So just think about that when you're constructing your title. And always remember that 
even if the book is about you or something that you've been through. So many people just want to put their story in a book. Who cares about your story if it's not telling someone how it benefits them? So with Tania, she told her story, but she told it in 10 different steps on how you cannot do this or what she learned about what she went through so that you don't go ahead and become that abuser or be that abuser or what were those takeaways from that experience. So that's what I would say about titles. Titles, 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 titles. And as a matter of fact, um, God is in Love With You is one of my favorite, favorite books um, that I've written. And it, it sold tons of copies. It sold in the bookstores because that was one of the first two books that I read, wrote, writ that I wrote <laughs> as an author, author of 22 books on 23. I lost count. It's somewhere between 20 25, I say. Yeah, I think it's 25. I tell everybody 25. I think it's 25. <laughs> Books on practical spirituality. This channel is all about magic, money, and metaphysics. So with that, these books, when the, when they come, the inspiration comes, sometimes the title will just hop up to you, and sometimes it won't. Sometimes it's a little hidden. You have to really work with it. Um, but one of the ones, titles I love is My Angelo, even when we're, when we're talking about nonfiction, because we all do nonfiction. And we look at my Angelo, I know why the cage bird sings. I mean, what a title, right? What a title. And I look at Toni Morrison, The Bluest Eye. What a title. Like, what's that about? The Bluest Eye, right? And then you, you, you just dive in and you just get all this deliciousness. So title, title, title. Now, we talked about the kinds of titles that work. Let's talk about some of the titles that don't work, that I've heard from light workers. Are y'all ready? <laughs> ready, ready, yes. Yes. You just want to know. <laughs> no. no. My 10 step meditation guide. No one wants another meditation guide. We don't want it. We don't want it. The crystallization of my consciousness. I don't know what that is. What are you talking about? <laughs> I don't e I don't even know if I want that. What is right. That? I don't know. I don't know if I want a crystallization nice. I don't know. Becoming me. What is that? Who are you? And why do I care? I mean, some of these titles that I've heard from different light workers, they're bad. They're really bad. Right? They're bad. So they're not gonna sell. They're bad. They're not going to sell. Can I say that more? <laughs> Was that clear? I thought yes. it was bad. <laughs> the journey of becoming me. Okay. I don't know why I even care about your journey. I don't know who you are. I don't care about what your journey. I care about my life. <laughs> now, here's the title of a book that I just wrote. And it's on, it's right now, it's on Amazon. Dark Night of the Soul. Why? Because so many people, I'll give you the exact title. I think it's Dark Night of the Soul, um, How to Overcome. I'm going to give the exact title for you, the, sub, the title and the subtitle. What is Dark Night of the Soul? A big A keyword that people are constantly searching for. Dark Night of the Soul. Dark yes. Night of the Soul. Dark Night of the Soul. Dark yes. Night of the Soul. I mean, so many people are looking for how to come out of the Dark Night of the Soul, how to overcome the Dark Night of the Soul. What is the Dark Night of the Soul? How, what do you do if you're in a Dark Night of the Soul? So because I knew, even from the YouTube channel, before I wrote that book, I had gone through the Dark Night of the Soul. Ten years I spent of my life in the Dark Night of the Soul. The first one, seven years. The, first, the next one, three years. So I had spent a decade in the dark night of soul. Jail, I know all about it. I can write the book about it. I know all about it. <laughs> and I did. And it's not only the dark night of the soul, it's how do you come out of it? It's how do you how do you ascend? And so many people are in these ditch experience or they're in these deep dark holes, right? And they want to be able to come out, but what our tendency is is to hop out or to jump out prematurely rather than graduate. So I wrote a whole series now of books on around this keyword of people wanting to have mental toughness, about people not wanting to feel like shit, about people, right? Isn't that an actual keyword? How to stop feeling like shit. 
right? How to stop sabotaging myself. How to stop being angry. Do you remember when we were doing all that keyword research? Yeah. Do you remember yes. some of the things you were coming across that people yes. are looking for? They're mm -hmm. looking for this. They're not looking for the journey of becoming you. They don't care. Mm -mm. They're looking for the solution to their problem. Zaire, what did, you, what did you discover when you started looking through those keywords and really doing your research and digging mm -hmm. deep into what are people looking for? What do people want? What do they need? Yes, I was definitely seeing a lot when the way how y'all taught me how to look up the keywords. It was definitely a correlation between like how to stop being abusive, how to how to stop how to deal with like a narcissist how to stop <laughs> how to stop being a narcissist yes how to, how to stop be being yes how to stop being so emotional how to stop being so sensitive so there was a lot of different keywords in that uh -huh. there's titles right there and these are titles of books that will sell because this is what people are looking for and everyone here that's watching this video you can actually write that book because you have the spiritual practices, the know, the know how, and the, the the experience to be able to write that book. I believe anyone watching this video right now can write a book about how to not be a narcissist, right? How to stop being angry. Yeah. How to stop um, sabotaging myself, right? Could couldn't we all write books like that? I have to master it yes. first, but yes. <laughs> I feel that. <laughs> right? It, it's just taking those steps that we put in the course. We have four steps that we walk through, everyone through, whether it's our private clients, whether it's course students, whether it's if you want us to do all this for you, name the price. We have at a certain price point, we can just do this all for you. Uh, and those four stages, ideation, creation, publication, amplification, and because we take you through those four pillars step by step methodically in the courses, you understand how to do all this. You understand how to do all this. And most people that write a book, it just won't sell. Okay, let's go to covers. That's the next <laughs> favorite thing to talk about, covers. Yes. Covers, covers, covers. Covers. I got to give some examples. I'll be right back. Okay, so <laughs> if you do not have any type of artistic ability, please don't make your own covers. If you're doing low content, no content, making your own covers is okay if you can make it look nice. And you don't even have to have the most beautiful covers for low content, no content. You really don't. However, run it by a few family members and friends, run it by a few people if you're gonna like start doing your own low content, no content first. And I love making covers and I still have found that I can make a cover and think it is amazing. And as soon as it's published and I see it this big next to all the other covers, I'm like, ooh, mm-mm. And I take it down and redo that cover. So even though I have graphic design training even though i have taken many classes there still have been times where i thought i did a phenomenal job on a cover but once it's published and out there next to everything else i have taken them down and that's the beauty of amazon is you can upload as many covers as many interiors as you want and you don't have to be married to it you're married to the title, baby. You're married to that title. You're married to that subtitle, but you don't have to be married to the cover. So if you find that a cover is not working, if you find that that cover just does not look good, you can change it. However, if you're if you're doing high content books, we don't even suggest that you do your own covers for like a high content book. Do not do your own covers. I'll give you an example. If you see these covers, these are how to be a Christian witch, magical prayers for the Christian witch, spellcrafting for the Christian witch, and the Christian witch's manifesto. These are all covers designed by the same cover designer. And this particular cover designer, when I found her, I loved her so much. And you can see her, her uh, work 
on the back of my book, Spellcrafting for the Christian Witch. You can see her cover, her um, contact info right down there. You'll see TJM book cover designs. And actually, these are on her uh, website. My book series is on her website along with many other book series. One of the things I love, love, love about this cover designer, and we show you how to get really amazing covers designed for not breaking the bank if you don't want to break the bank, right? You don't have to break the bank and spend hundreds or a thousand for your first book cover. You can, you, because there are book covers that, that do cost that much, you can, you know, you can get some really nice covers. As you can see, all these covers here that she created for me, and they are reasonably priced covers. But I tell you one thing, how to be a Christian witch sounds like hotcakes, 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 hotcakes. Another one that sells like hotcakes, and especially when you speak of changing the cover, I changed the cover on 40 Money Spells and 40 Money Mantras to reignite the sales on those books because those books are a little older. And when I say older, I mean I've written those books a while back. So you see 40 Money Mantras has a new cover, 40 Money Spells has a new cover, and that ignited the book sales. Because the beautiful thing about Kindle Cash, you can upload new covers anytime you want to, just refreshing that cover. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what I love about it, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> the creativity, the creativity of it. I love, I, I absolutely love that as well. And when you are create, if you are creating your own covers, and even when you're looking for, um, a design when you're purchasing your covers you want to i read a statistic when i was actually looking into cover design and i've read that red covers sell the most and i was like damn i don't think i have a red cover in any on any of my books <laughs> so my next book is gonna have a red cover, red cover. And, I, and i was yeah. like yeah none of my covers are red hmm let me think about that but yes i said red covers are the most popular covers that sell the most books. Because and I never pick red. Attentions. Just like that. Just grab your attention. One of our spaces, what, um, Zaire, can you pull up your, your book cover? This book cover I got designed at one of our beautiful, beautiful online um, resources that we share with all of our authors, 13 Signs You're a Witch. And I just love that she was a beautiful black woman. You know, I know you can't see it really clearly here. I just love that she was a beautiful black woman. Can you pull up your cover, Zaire? Ah! <laughs> <laughs> that cover is fire. Now, why is that cover fire? Ten things I learned from being a lesbian domestic. Oh, every time I see that cover, I just want to do Why? Why is that cover? Let's dissect it. Why is it so amazing? Well, I love the cover because number one, it has an eye that has the tear. And one thing when I was doing research on colors and covers, um, it has like the blue stands out to me and the blue they say conveys trust with the reader. So when we have the title, which is already a title that for me evokes some sort of vulnerability within me, and the blue, so now you have me feeling vulnerable. The blue makes me feel like I can trust what you're saying. So even though it is something that made me feel a little uncomfortable, I feel like you are someone that I can trust. I feel like you're someone who that was a part of your life that was your past. I feel like that is something that you've worked out within you. And I feel like now you're coming to me um, from a humble place and a place where you have learned from your past and now you are trying to, you broke your, you broke the chain of pain, the chain of pain. Like when you were talking about how it ran in your, in your bloodline, I feel like it ran in your bloodline until it ran into you and you broke that chain of pain. And now you are coming forth, bringing the information so that you can help other people break that chain of pain in their bloodline so that cover to me it felt like i can trust you and what you're saying and the information in that book can help me if i were an abuser or someone being abused and i could take those lessons and i can trust you as the person bringing me those lessons 
So that is what that cover did for me. And isn't the cover perfectly aligned with the message? It is. Because you have this woman's eye and it's a beautiful eye, but then you have a tear coming from it. And that automatically draws you into, and, and you know, even if a cover is a little bit, makes you uncomfortable, that's great because it's evocative. And that tear could have been the tear of Tania, or that tear could have been the tear of the woman that was on the other end. So the tear, like, it could have been from either person in the relationship. So I, it, the cover was beautifully done. It really was. It's so beautiful. And it was done at the same place where um, where 13 Signs of Witch was, was made as well. So really nice, nice job on the cover. Ah, speaking of covers, this is the first book that I have ever put myself on the cover on. I've never been on the cover of any of my books. This is the actual first book. And this is a book series now, The No Excuses Manifesto, all about, look, 10 steps to ascend any crisis or dark kind of the soul and attain mental toughness. What do you think all of those are? Keywords. Keywords, especially mental toughness. So I got um, Dark Night of the Soul, and the next, co uh, the next cover is the No Excuses Manifesto, then Dark Night of the Soul, and then the third one, um, Why You're Stuck or How to Get Unstuck. I'm going to get that keyword title just right for what people are searching for, what they're looking for, what's going to solve their problem, what's going to answer their, their issue. So these covers are actually the first time I've ever put myself on the cover of books. And since these books are just now being released, I don't have feedback yet from the audience. So let's see, you know, what, let's see what the reviews are. <laughs> I actually love that you waited until like you were, like you didn't put your face on the cover of your first book, not even your 10th book, not even your 15th. Like you waited until not even you the were- 20th. Not like you were waiting until you were way past 20 to start putting your face on the cover, which meant like you were well into your branding, like you were well into your branding. You had established a brand for yourself. You had you were how many videos do you have up on YouTube? Like thousands, over a thousand, yeah. <laughs> over a thousand videos up on YouTube. So you had established yourself as a. Um, influencer, you had established yourself as a best-selling author. So it would be different from, from someone else who decided to, hey, I want to be an author. Now, if Tania had to put her face on the cover of her first book, it probably wouldn't have been a bestseller right off the bat because no one knew Tania as an author. She had not yet established her brand. So when we're thinking about um, creating your covers, a lot of authors try to, I've seen a lot of authors do that off the bat. The first book, one of the first books that I was a part of as an anthology, it, the girl, she was so into herself that she wanted to put herself on the damn cover. And that book went nowhere. It's like, how are you going to put yourself on the cover? Nobody knows you. You're not Oprah. Like this book is not going to sell because you're on the cover. And it wasn't even a flattering picture. Like nobody knows you. <laughs> But after you've already developed and created a brand, after you've already created an audience, after you've already built your tribe, then yes, it's a great idea to put your face on the cover. But after you've already put in the after you've already put in the work, after you've already done 10 plus years of YouTube videos, after you've already written 20 plus books then yes, yeah, now it's time to put your face on the cover. But if you're out there thinking, oh, this is my first book, should I put my face on the cover? The answer is probably no. But after you're into your 20th book and you have bestseller all over Amazon and after you built that brand, then yes, baby, your people love you. They can't wait for your next book. They want to see you. Then now it's time. But like, I highly do not recommend on your first, second, third, fourth, fifth book you putting your face on the cover unless you're a celebrity. So congratulations on building your brand and on, yeah. on that stick to on keep on creating all of those books that are bestsellers that people love and to keep and, and continuing to create your content 
continuing because I know I tried YouTube. It just it didn't work out for me that well. Where YouTube I just kept putting out. Oh, no, good lord! YouTube. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so it did, it didn't work for me. So when we're talking about creating covers, I think that is one of the biggest mistakes that authors make on their first book is putting their face on the cover. When it's not time yet, sweetie boo boo, it's not time. Ooh. That book is not going to hit that number one bestseller because nobody knows you, and that is not going to make it stand out. I don't care how beautiful you think you are, it's not going to stand out. I think all of this is a symptom of one thing, one issue. And here's the issue before we go to number three reason why the books are not selling. This one issue is the authors are too focused on self and not focused on the avatar. Yes. Would you say that? Absolutely. What about the avatar? Absolutely. Like I stated in the beginning, like even if the book is about you, it's not for you. So why would why are you making the book so much about you when it's not for you like if the purpose is just to write the book for you then use that use that that's what your facebook page is for that's what instagram is for write a blog post if you want it just to be all about you but that's not what is the purpose of going through all of what's involved with writing a book if you don't plan on really making sales so this is all about building an empire. This is all, this is what it, I mean, unless you just want to say you're an author, then that's a different story. This is not the plat, this particular video is not what we're talking about. We're talking about creating books that's, that make sales. So if, if that's what you're interested in, then this is what we're talking about. You are creating a book that's for your avatar, that's for your audience, whether your intention is to, um, attract new clients, whether your intention is to book more speaking engagements, build your business, whatever your intention is from writing your books, you want to make that about your client, the person, whoever you want to buy your book, even with low content, no content. I have an avatar in mind. I'm not just create, I'm not just buying an interior and throwing it out on Amazon blindly. I'm not just creating an interior and putting it out there and hope somebody buys it. I have every single book that I put out there, I have an avatar in mind, even with low content books. You have to have somebody in mind that you want to click add to cart. And you gotta know what they're looking for. You gotta know what their pain points are. You gotta know them so that when they see something that you wrote, they're like, I feel this, this lady is talking to me. Yeah, I am. That's, <laughs> is that what you want people to feel? Yes. Like with um, Jenea, one of the girls that purchased the baby course, she said that she she's a vegan and she said that she was writing or she was tracking the foods that she was eating. So after the course, that's one of the, that's the first book that she created was a vegan tracker. Is that, am I stating that correctly? Yes, yes. She created a vegan tracker. It's so awesome. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so that was something, she knows exactly who her, av who her avatar is. So a lot of times the avatar is someone who probably looks very closely like you. However, it's, not it's still not about you so if i know okay my avatar is vegan then you just go down the list of all of the pain points that you had because okay i need to create something that is not already there this is something that i know i needed what are the things that i know i want to have in this vegan tracker that another vegan may need or want and then you go from there so every single, even the low content books, every single low content book that I create, even a, even the coloring books that I create, I have an avatar in mind. Or else if you have nobody in mind, then nobody's going to buy your book. And I think that's the mistake that so many authors write because they just want to say, oh, I'm an author, even though they haven't sold one book because they didn't take the time to research the niche, to research the keywords, to even think to even give a thought of who was going to hit add to cart, who was going to buy the book, who was it going to help? What was the purpose of the book? What was the intention behind it? And that's really the first step. And we go through all of that 
in both courses actually, but really we, we dive deep in the big course with all of this information. I love it. And you know what, Zaya? Your book debuted at number one. One baby boy. Not one. number two. It wasn't number one. two. <laughs> <laughs> Uno, baby. Yes. Number Super one on friend. number one on all of Amazon. That's oh, huge. Yes, baby. And mm -hmm. in, in, in look, in a genre that is a tightly, it's a competitive genre. How did you feel? And you snagged that screenshot, baby. <laughs> You snagged the screenshot of the orange banner, number one on Amazon. How did that feel? It felt surreal when I saw it. Cause I was like, wait, that wasn't there before. <laughs> Do you know how many people are trying to get that? And you know, it's, it's not like you got a, it's not rocket science. It's, it's systematic steps and strict strategy to get there. So how did you feel number one? It was, a undescribable feeling. I, I I literally felt like Tom had stopped for a second. I was like, and I just kept looking like I was tripping. <laughs> hey, that's my book. It works. What we teach you works. It works. I, I'm telling you, you know, there's a lot of people that you could listen to online. There's a lot of people. If they're not doing what they're teaching, What's the point? What's the point? I've sold thousands, one thousands, one thousands, one thousands of books in bookstores, online, at book events, all it, you name the way. I've sold books that way. I know what I'm fucking talking about. So you can either buy that expertise or you can do it yourself. Most authors I see have sold 20 copies to, to baby's kids, they mama and they daddy. Who can Ray Ray? Right? The church congregation. Church congregation. <laughs> yeah. Fast, please. Can you make an announcement and let them buy my book? You know, which is 20, 20 books. If you're the first, if this is your first time being an author and you sell 20 books, <laughs> incredible. Yet you did not sit down and put your words on paper and pour your soul out for 20 copies. You did not do that. So let's get it popping. Let's get that Kindle Cash popping, baby. I'm telling you, the house I'm sitting there right now is paid every single month for by Kindle Cash. Is that enough motivation for you? Passive income from Kindle Cash. Just make another book, put it on Kindle, and understand how to market it, and understand the strategy behind it, and keep it moving. People out here buying real estate. Wow. Yes. When you have this real is estate, so much okay. easier. Nobody calling you for a toilet. I used to be a real estate investor. No one calling you about toilets. I don't want tenants. I like books. Passive income. Passive income. All right, let's get to number three. So we talked about number one. Number one reason your book's not selling. Bad title. Number Ooh. two the reason. You, ooh, bad title. <laughs> bad title. But now all this, you know, light workers. Light workers. I, I don't know. Light workers are the worst. I just gotta be honest. All this ten dimensions of consciousness. <laughs> Tiptoeing through the tulips. That's what we like to do. <laughs> riding my unicorn had, and having thoughts of ascension while riding my unicorn. You know, you've got to be so. <laughs> Be practical enough. I love the esoteric. I do. I love esoteric things. Oh, I love it. I love unicorns. I love fairies. All of it. You must be practical enough that people whip out their credit card and swipe it and buy your books over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. That's not done by ambiguity. I don't understand some of these titles I've seen from light workers. No. Reflections on love. Let me ask you a question. Is anyone right now with a problem searching on YouTube or Amazon 
<laughs> putting in reflections on love. I just need some reflections on love. Is no. anyone? Mm -hmm. What did they no. say? Like you said, how to stop being angry, how to stop being a narcissist, how to stop having dysfunctional relationships, how to stop sabotaging myself, how to get mental toughness, how to stop being so emotional. On and on and on. You, you can find out what people are looking for. You can find out and then give it to them. You know, there's two yeah. ways to sell things, right? We talked about this in Dubai where you got this. I saw the light bulb go off over your head, Harmony, in Dubai at the Quantum Leap. That was a Quantum Leap. That was Quantum Leap. And in Quantum Leap Dubai, I taught that there are two ways to sell things. One, you give people what they want. You find the feet, footsteps just running. <laughs> and you just put your thing in front of the footsteps that are already running because you found out what they want and you just give it to them. The second way to sell something is to make what you want to make and convince people to buy it. Which is <laughs> an extremely high marketing budget. That's what's called infomercials. You don't need another slicer, dicer, chopper, dopper. But don't they have an infomercial on you right now about how horrible your life was? You ever notice how the before of the infomercial is black and white? Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, your life is so horrible. You have to scrub it. Tell us. Or your headlight is foggy. <laughs> or some other problem you didn't know you had. Aren't they convincing you that you have these problems? Oh, it's just taking you so long to chop these vegetables. Oh, this is horrible. <laughs> Slicey, handy dandy, super dandy slicer, dicer. Look at this. And then and then then it goes to color. And then you're happy. And then you're at a party with your handy dandy slicer dicer. Right? And then you're making drinks with your handy dandy slicer dicer. Oh, this is Slicing those lemons. <laughs> oh man. Slicing the eggs, slicing the carrots, slicing everything. Now you didn't need that handy dandy slicer dicer. You call Uber Eats every fucking night. <laughs> but, <laughs> but you are looking at this. Oh my God! Yeah, and they're press, pressing all the right emotional buttons because every buying decision usually is emotional, and then later on you justify it with logic. They're pressing all your emotional buttons, and then they put the timer, countdown timer, and then that's good for a limited it. time. It's nineteen ninety nine with free shipping. But <laughs> wait, there's more. But you wait, can get two. If, if you, you call within the right next now, five minutes. <laughs> you didn't need the first one, but now you're buying two. Okay? Two. And how many payments? Three payment plans. Convenient, easy payment plans. You won't even miss the money coming out of your bank account. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it goes. Yeah. <laughs> and why does it work? Well, it's because they fucking know what they're doing because they're manipulating all of our human emotions and our human failings, aren't they? because they're doing that and they're doing that with stealth and with great strategy and with great marketing expertise it works it's like science ding 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 the credit card comes out ding 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 credit card comes out ding 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 credit card comes out wouldn't you like to know how to do that in an ethical way in an authentic way in a way that's really helping people who needs another slice of dicer but who needs the next book on coming out of the dark night of soul or how yes. not to be ratchet in their relationship yeah right? abusing someone why mm -hmm. stop being abused that's what we can talk about right okay absolutely third and final reason the book's not selling We going to number three now? Are we ready for number three? We're ready. All right. This one is, uh, yet th these are pet peeves of mine. And this is yet another pet peeve of mine. No marketing or poor marketing. Your marketing, it That's sucks. Or it's just non-existent. Or it just doesn't exist. You hit publish and that was it. <laughs> What's the marketing plan? Where is the marketing plan? I tell you one thing, just one of the books, I'll give you an example of just one of the books. And then of course we have 17 marketing strategies that we use online and offline marketing strategies that work like a charm. And by the way, sell a few books that pays for the course. Take the course, determine to yourself that you are going to pay yourself back for the investment of the course. 
buy seven books. That's all. That's how you. That's how you take care of everything. Be productive and be creative, and go ahead and make your money, right? Seventeen marketing strategies. One of the marketing strategies that I use, and I talk about this in the course, is YouTube, of course. And one of the things I love, 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 love about YouTube is how it it helped not only to solidify the book in this bestseller nature of the book, because 40 Money Mantras, when that came out, it, it was a breakthrough book. And then we did every single day together, 40 days, one mantra a day for 40 days with the audience. And that book was really a breakthrough and it sold tons of copies, tons of copies, just sold, 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 like that. And what I realized that, that not only was that growing the YouTube audience and adding value, it was also selling books by not selling. Yes. Because we're in the mantras every day. Okay, today is this mantra. Okay? Yes. And da 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 da. People are like, I want it. I want mm -hmm. the mantra. Wait, links in the bio. It's selling without selling. It. No one wants to be sold to. But everybody wants to buy something. Yes. Let people buy. Don't sell them. Let them buy. That was genius. What's, what's yeah, it is. Right? Let them buy. And you did like what four four of those types of books? Four different launches like that of 40 money mantras, then we did 40 money scriptures, 40 money spells, 40 money secrets. Two of the books are out now. Two are being worked on. So 40 money mantras, hot seller, and 40 money spells, hot seller. Those two are super hot sellers. They sell just like that. And the covers are even redesigned now. And then 40 money secrets, which as you can tell, this is a, this is a, um, a uh, proof copy, because you can see it's got the little proof banner on it. So it's still being worked on. And I tell you, people will love those books. And when you get a book that works, make a series. That's yeah. why I have several series. Make a series. Because if they like the first book in the series, it's going to be easy to the next one, the next one. And then incorporate the feedback that you get from people. Because one of the biggest, do you know one of the biggest feedbacks I got from, from 40 Money Mantras? More pages. We need more pages. I was like, oh, my God. Okay. I can do that. I put in more journal pages. I recreated the book. The mantras are still in there, solid. There's a whole 40, and I put that on my Amazon sales page, but there is a playlist of 40 videos that goes with this book. So you're paying $11.11 for the book. The book is 11.11, and you're getting not only the book, you're now gonna hop over to YouTube, and you're gonna have a whole in-depth playlist of video for each mantra. It's like you're buying a package deal for just the price of a book. I mean, YouTube and Amazon, perfect match. And now Amazon has Amazon Live, where I can now go live on Amazon. It's about to be a wrap. Yeah. <laughs> I think when people hear the word marketing, they automatically think about money. And I think that's why a lot of people don't bother. However, there are a lot of ways that you can market without spending money. Marketing, when you market something, you're either going to be spent, you either market with your time or you market with your money. So you're going to have to invest something. It will be an investment, but you're either going to invest your time or you're going to invest your money. Like what Reverend Love did with her marketing strategy for these books, it was just ingenious what she did and i'm sure the value that she got because i was a, i was watching live when she was doing that and the money in the vortex that was being thrown at her oh, baby, they oh my goodness <laughs> baby i saw some morning she was i was counting her money like it was mine some mornings if she was getting over a thousand dollars in an hour Girl, so listen, oh, man. she was marketing those books, now? baby, but she was getting thousands of dollars in an hour worth of time. <laughs> so <laughs> when so and she was marketing her books, was so fabulous, baby. Oh, my God. It was blowing me away. I was like, that. money in the vortex, money in the vortex. We were all excited. <laughs> oh, my God. So when you think of like a lot of people just don't market their books because they think that it's going to cost them money. 
and some people don't want to spend the additional money. But when you think about marketing, just think that it's either going to cost you time or it's going to cost you money. It will be an investment, but you can invest your time. It does not. The marketing strategies that we teach in the amplification section, a lot of them don't cost you a dime. It will cost you your time, which is a valuable resource. However, they do not all cost you your money. So there, it is an investment. However, it will be worth it. It will pay you back like tenfold. So just know that it, it, you will invest. However, it, it'll be so beautiful that the, the time that you invest in yourself, because you're investing in yourself. And I think a lot of authors miss the mark when it comes to marketing. They really do. They miss the mark. And I noticed when I was when I started putting more effort on the back end with the amplification, a lot of mark, a lot of authors miss that part. They just put their books out on Amazon and they just hope that by some miracle, like there's there's a gazillion books on Amazon. There's a gazillion. You could have a really pretty cover in the best interior. But there's so much competition. You have to stand out. And the best way you can do that is to simply use one of those 17 marketing strategies that there that are in the back of the book and go holiday ham. Doesn't matter which one, whether it's we she Reverend Love does go in depth on on Amazon ads, which you can do. Definitely. I suggest it. I just started doing Amazon ads and it makes a huge difference, even in even in the organic sales that you make. And let me tell you, I set my budget and uh, there has not been one day that Amazon even hardly reached, scratched the surface of the budget that I set. So don't be afraid to set that budget because there's not been one day that Amazon reached my budget. So you don't have to be afraid of marketing your books. Don't be afraid of that, even on the ways that are paid. Because you won't max, uh, I haven't maxed out. I, I guess I can't promise. If you don't know what you're doing, you can easily eat up your budget. If you hit a manual, if you if you hit a, if you do automatic ads, you definitely can hit that budget, baby. <laughs> so if you do it wrong, you can eat it all the way up. <laughs> so if you do it the right way, it's very unlikely that you will waste a lot of money. If you if you go through the steps in the course, it, let, let me do that disclaimer. I love it. This is a really good question, Alethea. The reason for my writer's block was because I was trying to force the writing of this book to get to the next book. I didn't think to write other books and return to the book when it's time. I love that. Um, Alethea, you want to say about that? Any other authors? Did you get writer's block? How did you get past it? What happened? Did you have resistance come up? I have resistance come up with every book. Still. Well... Even though I've never had writer's block, that has never happened. I focus a lot on low content, no content. However, there have been times where um, even though they, I don't put like a lot of words in my low content, no content, there have been times where I have stopped working on one book for one, one reason or another and started doing something else. So there have been times where I have done that just for the simple fact, like that one book that I'm working on right now, which is my first. I don't even want to say it's a it's a high content, but it is definitely my first book that I am publishing as an ebook. And that has been taking me way more time than I thought it ever would. Um, and I have um, been working on other books in the meantime. But yeah, I, I would not get stuck on that. You can always work on other projects, other books, especially if you are doing low content in the meantime, just so that you're not just sitting there looking at your computer or looking at your notebook, wasting time, not doing anything. Because what I found is when I did jump over and start working on a coloring book or started working on something else, it was easier for me to jump back into the flow of my first ebook that I'm creating after I took a break from that. I like I like that. And I like what you said, Alethea, um, trying to force the writing of this book to get to the next book. And I like that you were aware, right? Isn't that the most important point? You were aware that you were forcing. And creativity is never forcing. It's a flow. It's a divine flow. It's an outpouring. So it is inspiration. 
and when you're writing from inspiration it's going to flow and when you keep giving yourself to your writing and you keep giving yourself to creativity the muse just meets you the muse oh my god don't we love dancing with the muse oh my yeah. god i love the muse and that's what's going to really power you when you are feeling like oh, you know <laughs> i like alethea that you had the self-awareness you realize it was forcing so back up right that's when you just back up a little bit and you just you can do that you can pause you can shift to another project the important thing is keep moving forward keep moving forward right I mean, Wayne Dyer wrote how many books? 100, 120, 150 books? Yes. And they were wow. freaking spectacular. All of them. <laughs> All of them. All of them. I got Wayne Dyer aspirations, for real, for real. Yes. Keep going. And I know you'll make it there, yes. Oh, I'll definitely yeah, make for it sure. there, by the grace of God. Keep going, because that's how you get your win and big wins. Consistency and keep going, keep going, keep going, no matter what. Go to ValerieLove.com, click on programs because you're going to see the delicious, delicious, delicious courses are both there for you. Not only do we have your um, crash course, it's only $297. We have the big course now that's $1997, $1,997. And it's got payment plan. It's got a payment plan. It's got a yes. payment plan. And payment plan. <laughs> Which is nice. You can start right and start getting your Kindle Cash and use your Kindle Cash to pay some things, right? It's got a payment plan. So that's really, really important. Here's the real bottom line reason of why we want you to have this Kindle Cash. We want you to have this Kindle Cash because, family, we are about to up level to some opulence. We're going to be talking about this on Wednesday with the goddesses. We have a goddess stream, live stream on Wednesday. We are going to be up leveling. Family. We're going to be up leveling our travel, up leveling. Yes. Our, we're looking at Maldives, Bora Bora, Fiji, Morocco, Zanzibar, <laughs> Tanzania, Greece, Thailand, Bali. You know, we're looking at all these places to travel to in 2021 and 2022. And yes. how do you get to all those places unless you got some nice, lovely Kinder Cash coming in, baby? Kinder Cash, Kinder Cash. This is one of the ways this channel is all about back of money and metaphysics. And if you do not have consistent income coming in, multiple five figures a month, getting up to six figures a month and beyond, this is your opportunity to do that. Get that Kindle cash. Get yourself in a position where you can go ahead and take these incredible trips and up level your life, up level your whole, your whole life. Your whole life. Your whole and, life. and what I love about this is like, when Reverend Love decided she was going to move to Mexico and I went down there to visit her, I took my little laptop and while I was there longer than I had envisioned, I got books done while I was there in the middle of paradise. Down in Mexico, baby. While I was swimming in cenotes, while I was on the beach. You can do this from wherever. Where, where we, when we say time freedom when we say location freedom we mean that like the amount of experiences that i was able to have while i was i don't even want to call it vacation because i literally went to visit someone that i loved and was able to still keep my business running and was still able to be productive and live luxuriously while still being able to hit publish. Woo, I love that. So yes, get your I, life is what we like to say. <laughs> that God life though. <laughs> that God life though. So we're gonna put links below in the, in the um, description for both the courses and Hey, if you're not ready for the courses yet, text me, baby. I got you. I'm going to give you five free master classes. Complimentary, not free. There's nothing good is free. Complimentary. That means we could be charging for it, but we're not. 
and that's below in the description as well. That's I just want you to be wealthy. I mean, I want you to thrive. I want you to be badass, gangster, mm -hmm. reaching your full divine potential. You know, handling it like a spiritual gangster, stepping out of the ordinary, forget mediocrity, kick mediocrity to the curb, baby. Yes. It's time for opulence. Time that was opulence. mediocrity. That was so 2020. We done with that. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so done with 2020. <laughs> we are over it. We are over it. Alivia has one more comment, and let's go to Alivia for a moment. My first book focuses on beginner method, and I'm having trouble with writing from starting place. I have ideas that are more focused on magic for all levels of magic, so it calls to me now. Beautiful. I'm going to give you, I'm going to close with this. And this is something I do, and this is something for all the writers. I'm going to close with this. Never, never let yourself face a blank page. Never. It's unkind to yourself. It's cruel. Never let yourself face a blank page. What does that mean? Every time I start a book, I start with a template. I start with something already there. I start with the guts. I start with something I've already created. I gave it to the authors. Remember we had the template? Zaire, mm -hmm. I gave you a template. Yes. Just that so helps you so much. Did that help a lot? Yes. Just so you don't start from scratch. Never start anything from scratch. Never start. I'm a seasoned writer. I've been writing for freaking since I was in high school. My writing was published in the New York Times when I was 17 years old. And I am telling you, as a seasoned writer about to write a whole three-part novel, I never let myself face a blank page. I never start from scratch. Never, ever, ever. Okay? Uh, let's look at Alethea. What do you think of the title? I am that I am affirmations workbook for the soul. No. Uh, Taya Bell, you want to speak to that? That's a no for me. It's a no. And, and I'll tell you why it's a no. Go ahead, Taya Bell. I'll tell you why it's a no for me. What is it for you, Taya Bell? It's pretty, but nobody's searching for that. So nobody's going to find it. So you want to be Googleicious in all that you do. So when you are thinking about titles and you're thinking about keywords, that title, nobody's searching for that on Amazon. It does not contain any keywords. So nobody's going to find your book. So that you're going to, you're starting out behind and not ahead. So when any, any book that I put out or, or Reverend Love, Tania, it's going to already have keywords. You you want to think about what somebody is typing into Amazon. What is somebody typing into Google? What is somebody typing into YouTube? How do you find the YouTube video that you're looking for? How do you find the book that you're looking for on Amazon? If you wanted to find something on Google, what is what is the problem that you are solving for the reader? That's what you're thinking about. That's a, be that's a beautiful sentence that you just typed in. But if I, how am I going to find your book? I don't even know what the book is about. So I am that I am. Affirmation workbook for the soul. I'm not, as I'm never going to find your book because I'm not typing in I am that I am. I'm not going to Google, I'm not going to Amazon and typing in I am that I am. It's It sounds really pretty. It really is. But as a as somebody that's going to Amazon to purchase something, I'm not ever going to find that because I'm not typing it in. So you have to have some sort of keyword that somebody is typing to purchase. So just think about your buying practices. If you were to go to Amazon right now and go to buy something, how are you going to find it? So anybody that's buying a book right now, unless you heard of a book, Unless your friend said, hey, girl, go to Amazon and buy this book. It was great. But usually that's not how we shop. And, and Alethea, think about it this way. What is the pressing problem? I've been saying this for decades. We run on pain and pleasure. That's how we're wired. Pain and pleasure. You automatically move away from pain. You automatically move toward pleasure. It's just automatic. 
So what is the painful problem that he solves? I think light workers try to be so uplifting and inspiring that they don't like to think about problems. You gotta get in there in the dirty, like 10 things I learned from being a, a domestic, a, a lesbian domestic abuse. Super specific, super powerful, super big problem it's solving. Domestic abuse across all relationships, not just lesbian relationships because gay people, gay people and straight people, we act crazy too, right? Straight people act crazy too. <laughs> Just like lesbian people, lesbian people don't hold the uh, corner on having abusive relationships, right? How many people have abusive relationships? That solving a painful problem. I am that I am. Affirmation workbook for the soul. What painful problem does it solve? Is it that you want people to have affirmations? Give them a thousand affirmations to jump out of bed in the morning and be a spiritual gangster. 10 a day for 100 days, something like that. I would jump out of bed with these 10 affirmations if the affirmations is the thing. I myself don't believe in affirmations, but hey, that, and I have a whole video on why affirmations don't work and how you could possibly be even hurting yourself with affirmations. So that's here on the YouTube channel, just search it. I would say go deeper. Alethea and everyone watching, you, you are here to solve painful problems. How so, that, like, if you think about Tania's title, if you're thinking about, well, where, where, where were her key words? Domestic abuser. People are searching, like, if I wanted to read a book, I would search. If I, if I was a domestic abuser, I would search for how, how, to, how to not be a domestic abuser. I would want to watch a YouTube video about that. So, you, so, YouTube and Amazon and Google... If I were to type in how to not be a domestic abuser, even if I don't type in the word lesbian, her book might pop up because I'm typing in how to not be a domestic abuser. Domestic abuser, those are the key words. So as long as you have key words in your title, something will pop up. As long as your affirmations, that's an affirmation would be a key word, but there's not any supporting keywords enough so that your book is going to pop up. And how many But the how to and domestic abuser that's enough that's enough key words so that things will start to populate so you're, you're you have to start thinking about what people are typing and, and how, how people many, are searching that's right and how many affirmation books are there way too a, many a billion <laughs> yeah a billion here's the other thing alethea um thank you this book is focusing on people owning power within and not looking for it just outside themselves only this is excellent and here's the feedback about it. What painful problem comes up, Alethea, for people because they're not owning their power and they're looking for it outside themselves? Because here we're talking processes. This is the same thing I talk about in, in, on, on Clubhouse. We're on Clubhouse every morning, Monday through Friday. Hop in the room with me. Please be with us on Clubhouse. Don't be killing in the morning. Yes. Don't be killing in the mornings on Clubhouse. <laughs> Oh my yes, God. we go deep. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Right? It is cray cray every morning on Clubhouse. But one of the things we talk about on Clubhouse is Island A language and Island B language. And we'll talk about it really quickly. Island A, where is your person right now? They're in an abusive relationship. They're smoking and they don't want to smoke. They're being angry. And they don't know why they're angry. They don't want to be angry anymore. They keep sabotaging themselves and they don't know why. I keep sabotaging myself and I don't know why. These are painful problems. What's Island B? Where they want to be? They're peaceful rather than angry. They're in a love relationship with the soulmate twin flame rather than being in an abusive relationship. They are got money oozing out of every pore in their body rather than trying to figure out money. So you want to think in terms of island A, where is my person right now with their painful problem, which we teach you exactly how to do this in, in the course, how to find that out. And what is island B? Where are you going to take them? And here's the, here's the kicker. Here's the kicker family. Talk about nothing in between. Don't talk about your process. 
Don't talk about how you're going to get them there. Don't talk about, well, you need meditations. Hey, gal, make money for tax. Love it, love it. Don't talk about, oh, um, we're going to meditate. We're going to say these affirmations. We're going to do this. Nobody fucking cares, okay? <laughs> Nobody fucking cares about that. They don't. If we could all get everything we wanted by taking a pill, who wouldn't take that pill right now? Oh, trust yes. me, I would take that pill. If you could take a pill, have everything you want, I would fucking take the pill. Okay, don't play. I don't want process. Process is a necessary evil. People don't want your book. Yes. They want the result. They don't want your yes. books. They don't want my books. They want the result. What are they going to get from being having this book? How to be a Christian witch? Why does it sell so many pro uh, so many copies, thousands upon thousands upon thousands of copies? Why? Just buy the book just as a frame of reference, even if it's not a book that really is the kind of book that you would, um, that suits where you are in your spiritual journey. Get it anyway. Why? Because it solves a painful problem. And I tell people right up front, I was conflicted. I didn't, I didn't know if my soul was going to go into darkness. Why did I understand the problem so well? Because I had the problem. I was conflicted. I was a witch born magical. And the Christian paradigm tell you, oh my God, that's the devil. Darkness is going to gobble your soul. Or you're going to die. Go to hell and burn forever. <laughs> and you start wondering, I can't even have a crystal. And then you start sneaking around and trying to get a crystal, trying to get a tarot deck and hide me from your Baptist friends and, and the name of Jesus. And I'm pleading the blood and all of that crazy stuff. And you're like, ah, 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 I don't know what to do. This is a problem. Inner conflict. You don't have peace. I had that problem for years. You cannot even talk to God because you wonder if God is even talking to you because you got crystals in your bra. Stop it, people. Stop you, it. If you really want a bestseller, you should have wrote a Jehovah Witch. Woo! You would have really... <laughs> I, I wrote that one too. Confessions of a Christian Witch, how an ex-Jehovah's Witness became, you know, a practicing Christian witch in, in my journey and how you can too, how an ex Jehovah's Witness, some of this is magical, how you can too, that book is all five stars. Everybody that reads that book is like, wow, that book is Oh, like, you already wrote the book, dag. Like that. That's like one of the biggest books I've ever wrote. Confessions, oh my God, Confessions is like, it's like a memoir. And Confessions of a Christian Witch, you know, all about, it says, how an XJW now, this is, a, this is a really interesting con uh, um, concept. How an ex-Jehovah's Witness, is that a keyword? XJW, ex-Jehovah's Witness. Is that a keyword? Yes. Yeah, do you know how many people are searching XJW and XJW stories? Super tons of people. XJW, how an ex-Jehovah's Witness summons the courage to live magical and how you can too. If I wow. can come from Jehovah's Witness, the army of religions, and live magical, you can too. Here's how I did it, right? So I understand why did I have the whole series on Christian witchcraft, spellcraft for the Christian witch, how to actually cast spells from the Bible, from using your what you know as a Christian. How? Because that was- Ooh, that one is red. Is that one the best selling one out of the series? I'm just curious. How to be a Christian witch is still the hottest seller out of the whole series. That's the very what? first one. What? It's red. This ah. one is red. <laughs> <laughs> They're all different colors in the series. So you can see it, right? And I love, I freaking love the series. A lot of people buy the series all together. But the reason that the series works so well, Aliki, is because I'm tapped into that painful problem. See, don't just give people that beautiful answer. You've got to be tapped into the problem. Zaire has tapped into the problem of domestic abuse among lesbians. Her and her girlfriends was going at it. I still mm -hmm. can't believe it because when you look at Zaire, she's this beautiful, calm, peaceful person. I still want to see the footage because I'm like, show me the receipts because I can't believe it. And she had these beautiful girlfriends. I still can't believe they was fighting like that. Right? Yes, it's true. But they were. That wasn't my reality. But I'm like, wow. I would have never guessed it. If you had told me Zaire could just beat down some people, nah. She wasn't beating them down, Rev. She wasn't right. beating them down. Not beating down. Going, going Just black eyes. <laughs> no, they was, they was going at it. <laughs> they was both going at it, right? Yes, we both were. Uh -huh. They was Aww. both going at it, right? So... 
That's a problem. So Alethea, you got to get in there with that problem. Alethea and all our authors, all of you that you have a powerful message, you've been through some shit. You better talk about what you've been through. You, you've got to have that courage to be vulnerable and step out there. You know some of the most vulnerable books I've ever read? Books by Reverend Dr. Yala Band said, them things will make your skin crawl when you're reading because she's telling you her whole life. You'd be like, oh my God. That's my spiritual mama and I pray to be you know, vulnerable like that. Open. Yeah. Oh man. That's, that's why every writing of a book is a spiritual cathartic experience. That's why I keep writing. It's just so cathartic. You're just writing and you're healing. You're just pouring it out. And then package it in a way that people are looking for it. They want it. Yeah. That's your job as an author. Who are y'all to wrap up? Who are you and where can people find you and your deliciousness? Thank y'all for being I, on the channel tonight. I love y'all. Love you too. <laughs> I am Taya Bell and you can find me at tayabell.com. I know that's right. How many books have you written thus far or created? I won't even say written because like you said, I don't write books. My people write the books. <laughs> yes, <laughs> baby. Y'all just provided templates. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. It's probably close to 200, I would guess. Um, at f when I first started out, I was just so focused on putting them out there, putting them out there, which was such a great feeling. But now I have slowed down and I am more focused on the quality over quantity. And it brings me so much more joy than just the mass production of them. And I have found that that works so much better. So I know it's somewhere around 200 um, under my name and I have a couple of pen names. Uh, now it's been so much more rewarding as well. So somewhere around 200, I kind of stopped counting, but yes. So you can go to tabell.com. You can click on books and you can see some of my favorites. Um, again, I have some under different pen names. Um, you can go explore, but yes, that's how you can get a hold of me. I'm on all social media under Tayabell as well. Um, um, find me on Instagram there, um, Facebook. You can find me on Clubhouse there. I'm everywhere under Taya Bell. Uh, YouTube as well. And you have a room for authors and aspiring authors on Clubhouse every week. Yes, we are there at 3 p.m. on Mondays. 3 p.m. on Mondays. 3 p.m. Eastern Time on Mondays. 3 p.m. EST, yes. I totally got my time mixed up tonight. So thank you very <laughs> much, family. <laughs> for being patient with me tonight. My time was totally messed up today, but I got myself together. I got myself together to still deliver to the audience. And hey, Mark, how you loving? How does one get started? I've been thinking of one, but how do I gather my trouts? Not sure if I understand completely what you mean by that. I will say, oh, how does one get started? I've been thinking of, okay, thoughts. Gotcha. <laughs> gotcha, 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 gotcha. Okay, you've been gathering your thoughts. Gotcha, 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 gotcha. Um, Here's the deal. We have a few free uh, complimentary master classes that we've done. And one of them is your book in 30 minutes. And that's at uh, ValerieLove.com. Click on, are you ready to be an author? Or click on programs. And you're going to see there that are you ready to be an author is going to take you to where you can get access to the master classes. And we actually have a master class on that, on how to be able to Get that book out there. Oh, Mark, get that book out there. Get those books out there. Oh, my God, I love it. I love books. I mean, how much have we learned from books on the spiritual journey? So much. Yeah, so so much. much. Oh, my God, so much. Zaire, how can people get a hold of you and find your delicious book? Yes, you can go to TaniaB.com and you hey. will find my book there and all my socials. Well, stop it. You got your website up. That's in the process right now. I'm working on that, but I have my link tree set up for it right now in the meantime. Smart. I love it. <laughs> love I love that. It. I love it. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking the universe is telling me, let me let me see what Mark is saying. I think the universe is telling me to go for it because it showed me this video. <gasps> yes. Absolutely. <gasps> With my YouTube feed. Oh, I got the God bumps. I got the God bumps. 
Oh, that's it, Mark. That is it. Hey, Jennifer, how you loving? How you loving? How you loving? Mark, go for it. Go for it, Mark. I tell you one thing. It took me 10 years to write and publish my first book. 10 years. And now the author of 25 books on practical spirituality, I can tell you, and financially independent from books, from books, I can tell you that your message, the power of the word, and sharing your message and all the other authors that are in our programs that have now published their books, oh my God, what a time to write your story. What yes. a time to step out there, right? And put it out there. Like, this is the perfect time, Mark. And just the fact that this came up in your YouTube feed and now you're here. Oh, my God! Yay! Yes. Yes. <laughs> Thank you for being with us, Mark. <laughs> your time is now. Your time is here. The universe has answered. The universe has answered. We got plenty of free um, complimentary uh, resources for authors. And then, of course, we have the programs, the paid programs. We have a a short crash course program that's only two ninety seven a course, and then we have a larger course on really building your Kindle cash book empire that has a payment plan. So, oh my God, you've been thinking of it all day, Mark. You are in the right place. I'm so happy. You made my day. You made my day. Yeah. All right, love tubers. I love you. I love you. I love you. ValerieLove.com. Click on programs. I'm also going to link it up below how you can get a hold of all of these delicious programs. And also, I want to just um, give a shout out to our other authors that you'll be seeing coming up too in the next couple of weeks. We got a couple of more authors that we're going to introduce you to in their incredible books. We're so proud of them. We're so proud of them. And we are so proud of all of you for hanging with us on this live stream. Love y'all. Thank you for Love being patient with me tonight while my time was off. <laughs> Have a beautiful night. God bless. God Love bless. You. Peace. All right. Peace.